Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 45. SpaceX makes history once again, and a big explosion. And Tesla delivery numbers in China also hits a ride on a rocket, together with the Tesla stock price, of course. And Porsche Taycan is so good, it might be hurting Porsche's business. And JP Morgan makes the joke of the year. <laughs> I will tell it later. <laughs> and we got Yahoo's worst company of the year. Can you guess who? The answer to this and much more on today's episode. Let's dive right in. As predicted last week, Tesla stock price did go over $600 this week. Was even over $650 at some point, but ended at $609. And we only have one week to go before S&P 500 inclusion. So will we see the stock go over $700 next week? What's your guess? And Tesla did announce that they will do another capital raise for another $5 billion. And they have already completed the new stock sales in just 48 hours. Talk about a snap of your finger and you have $5 billion in the bank. Well, just the idea now that $5 billion is kind of, it's not a drop in the bucket, but something close. And yet for them to be able to raise $5 billion like that is pretty extraordinary. doesn't work. That is exactly what I said I thought they should do. Dilute the stock just a little bit while it is on this crazy rise before and after the S&P 500. I said they should do a little more than just $5 billion, but Tesla did say that they would continue to raise capital from time to time. And this was their third time they did a capital raise this year. So if we can expect maybe three to four capital raises next year, then we would get to about the $40 billion I talked about in another video. Because with this capital raise of $5 billion, they would get close to $20 billion in the bank. Yeah. So yes, Tesla did not make some kind of deal with the S&P 500 to buy stocks directly with Tesla. I was wrong about that. But it seems like Tesla is going to do that themselves and dilute the stock less than 1% from time to time. And it really doesn't matter for our shareholders because just look at the stock price since the last $5 billion raise. The stock have gone up a couple of hundred dollars since then. So we didn't even feel the dilution because the Tesla stock just continues to rise. So no matter how this will play out, Tesla will definitely get a lot of billion dollars in the bank, as I talked about, and will not have any financial problems anymore. And they can just continue their crazy growth, maybe even faster if they want to. Just amazing to see how far Tesla has come from almost bankruptcy in 2008 and 2018, and now can raise $5 billion with a snap of their finger, only diluting their stock less than 1% having $20 billion in the bank and being profitable. Just amazing job, Tesla. Another amazing job for one of Elon Musk companies was SpaceX, that once again made history and blew our minds. So one of the biggest things that happened this week was no doubt the flight of the SN8. That was just mind-blowing. First of all, after waiting for two days, it finally took off. The giant building took off with three Raptor engines. And to give us an idea just how big this starship is, Twitter Panay tweeted these pictures for scale. Yeah, it is massive. And this huge starship took off and climbed to 12.5 kilometers of altitude before it made its belly flop and started skydiving back down. And then at the end, it did a crazy flip and hit its target. Unfortunately, it hit the target a little bit too hard. But this was definitely a big success. Everything this rocket did, the world has never seen before. Biggest rocket to ever take off. Belly flop never done before. A skydiving rocket never done before. And while skydiving, still navigating to its target. 
the power flip never done before and it did actually hit its target but unfortunately some of the Raptor engine went out and therefore the Starship did not land softly back down. But what a crazy achievement of SpaceX and getting all this data they needed and ending the year off with. Yeah, a bang. And I just want to show some more videos from Twitter here from other angles, some very close and some very far away, but just gives a very cool perspective of this historical moment. Amazing. And Elon Musk himself and Gwyn Shotwell were out on the launch site or crash site, whatever you want to call it, checking it all out. Again, just an amazing CEO and president of this company. And SpaceX plans to roll out the SN9 to the launch pad already next week. Oh, yes, please. And I just want to give a big shout out to everybody's everyday astronaut and his team because they were out there for days and did live stream both days and Tim Dot, the everyday astronaut, just did an amazing job explaining everything and answered a many great questions. And he just kept the spirit high both days and was just so positive. Big respect for the work he does and let's just end this SN8 talk by watching Tim Dot watching the SN8 coming down. No! If that doesn't brighten your day, nothing will. What an amazing time to be alive and it won't be long before Tim Dot's picture will become reality. Giga Shanghai just continues to ramp up production. And in November the company registered 21,604 vehicles according to CPCA data. A new record and about 78% more than October sales numbers. I did not expect to see these many deliveries in China already. As I talked about in last week's news episode, we knew that the production was up at this level, but they do not have as many stores and delivery centers in China as they do in the US, so I did not expect them to be able to deliver almost 22,000 cars in just one month in China. But Tesla has opened quite a few new stores, but still this is just mind-blowing what they are capable of achieving. So Tesla is the best-selling new energy vehicle in China. So to compare to some of the competition that many are saying will destroy Tesla's sales in China, during the past 11 months this year, Xpeng sold a total of 21,341 electric cars. That is less than Tesla sold in just November. What competition? Yes, Tesla sales surpassed a combined sale of Neo, Xpeng, Li and BYDs. Nice. Accumulated Model 3 sales in China exceeded 110,000 from January to November. And the vehicle has already secured its title as the leader in the sales of new energy vehicles in 2020. Tesla sold nearly 22,000 Model 3s in November, up from 12,000 in October, which Webboost analyst says is a very strong indicator that demand in this key region is continuing to grow and will pick up more momentum next year. But according to short sellers like Gordon Johnson, the sales should only be going down. Or as Gordon put it, the demand is collapsing. Demand for their cars is collapsing in Europe, the USA and China. But instead, the sale almost doubled in November. Can't wait to hear Gordon Johnson try to explain that. Because according to Gordon Johnson, 2020 was going to be a disaster of a year. And I think they have a disaster of a, of a year in 2020 ahead of them. Yes, he couldn't have been more wrong even if he tried. So please don't listen to this man. If you do, you will probably lose all your money just as Gordon Johnson has. Because sales are not going down, but only going up. And a leaked email from Elon Musk shows that it is Tesla's only problem right now, keeping up with demand. As he wrote, we are fortunate to have a high class problem of demand being quite a bit higher than production this quarter. To ensure that we have the best possible outcome and earn the trust of our customers and investors who are placing their faith and hard earned money with us, we need to increase production for the remaining of the quarter as much as possible. I would only send this note if it really mattered. 
By the way, please send me a note directly if you see a way to improve output but feel your voice is not being heard. Again, just my kind of CEO and what a nice problem to have. You can always pick whatever country you want and try to make Tesla look good or bad, but on a global scale, there is just no denying that Tesla is an absolute dominating force. It is only growing with this amazing ramp in China. Can't wait to see the result of Q4. It should be an epic quarter for Tesla. And speaking of China, we did see Model Y's single piece cast spotted at the Gigafactory 3. And it also kind of looked like they are doing some expansion to the east of the factory, suggesting that Tesla is not done building the Gigafactory 3. Or maybe they are just making more parking space for all this crazy production. And we also see the body of the Model Y on the ground at the Gigafactory Berlin. It is probably test bodies to adjust paint shop and more, but cool to see the bodies are already there. And when we take a look at the site, there is just factory everywhere. We are getting really close, my friends. And UK's EV market share jumps to 16% in November, overtaking diesel. Nice. And speaking of UK and EVs, if you haven't already seen it, you must see fully charged video with Robert going to the Gridsurf electric forecourt. I have reported on this place before, but now it is finished and it is just looking awesome. And this is just the first of 100 forecourts Gridsurf will like to build that are all making their own energy. Just amazing. So jealous to see this very, very fine charging station you get in the UK. That can charge pretty much everything and are very future proof with up to 350 kilowatt chargers. Nice job. Very well done, Gridsurf. And the last time for the charge was out there, there were 36 electric cars charging simultaneously. Very impressive. And the CEO of Gridsurf had some amazing things to say in the interview about the climate crisis we are in. The thing that kind of makes me happy I was asked about this is, um, is the fact that we're actually making a difference. The really you know, frightening thing really is if, if you look at the data from, that comes out of the UN, I mean, it's all a bit difficult to kind of understand what it all means, but. There's this kind of visualization I look at a lot, it's called the Mercator Climate Clock, and it sort of ticks down ominously. It says, you know, if you, would, if you produce this much, you know, this many tons of carbon, if you emit this many into the atmosphere, temperatures are going to rise by a certain amount. Uh, and effectively, we've got uh, about seven years and one month last time I looked at it, which was last week, uh, before we'll have enough carbon in the atmosphere that temperatures are going to go beyond one and a half degrees of warming. And that's when it goes really out of control. And it's under 25 years for two degrees. So, so we just don't really have, like no one, like my kids can't yeah. do anything about that. Yeah. You know, and uh, unless people who can doing, you know, who have the option today to do something about it, are doing something about it. Your kids and your grandkids and you know, 20, 30 years time with the dust has settled to, so to speak. And someone says, so when you knew that, you know, when it, what did you do? When you knew it, when it was clear and the scientists were saying and the planet was warming and this was that and there were feedback loops were going to happen, what did you do? Yes, we all know climate crisis is real and I think Herbert is just spot on here. What would you tell your children when they grow up, when they ask you, Daddy, when you knew there was a climate crisis, what did you do? Did you help the transition to renewable energy or did you just continue driving polluting ice car and help kill the planet? Yeah, I know what I would like to answer. Yes, we still have a choice and I'm just so glad to see this video from Fully Charged with all the electric cars charging at this amazing site. Not just Teslas, but electric cars coming together and being part of the revolution and solution. And you must go watch Fully Charged great videos about this amazing place. What are you waiting for? You can always come back here. Go, 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 go. And Volkswagen is really starting to understand what it will take to go all electric. Because the EU Green Deal, that would mean that EU would have about 13 million EVs on the road by 2025. And Herbert Dice did say if this deal goes as it is, we need 40 large battery factories in Europe just to meet the demand. Yes, that is what Tesla has been trying to say for years, but no one is really jumping on the train together with Tesla, thinking huge scale battery production. But maybe EU's Green Deal can light a fire under these other automakers. 
Let's hope so. And everybody's Tesla Björn, Björn Nyland from Norway, did another great video about a road trip he was on with his friend Chris. And we got a little glimpse of the future because one of the charging stations they went to was at a Circle K gas station. We do see charges as gas station, but they are usually hidden in the back somewhere. But at this Circle K station, they were in the front of the gas station and the old disgusting gas pumps was in the back. So cool to see gas station taking the switch very serious and in Norway they really have to and do it now since new vehicle sales are already 80% electric cars. Just amazing. Yes, Norway is leading the way. It is of course not a great serve forecourt but cool to see old gas station turning slowly into charging stations. And in my country, Denmark, we also got some great news for EVs. Denmark agreed with Parliament on a deal to put at least 775,000 electric or hybrid vehicles on Danish road by 2030 as a part of its latest step towards an ambitious target to reduce greenhouse gas emission 70% by 2030. And that was very good news since there was also talk about raising the taxes on EVs. But luckily that did not happen. Would also have been a very bad idea if Denmark is to reach its emission goal by 2030. So that was really nice. There are currently about 20,000 electric vehicles in Denmark, more than 10% of which are Teslas. Model 3 was the best selling electric car in the first half of 2020, indicating a very high interest in the manufacturer's vehicle. Tesla Model 3 was actually the best selling car in September, not just electric but car. Yes, Tesla Model 3 is becoming a very usual sight on the roads. Every time I go for a ride, I always see other Teslas on the road. I talked with another Dane that said Tesla expects to deliver 50 cars per day in December and hopes to deliver more than a thousand Teslas in December, which would be a new record for Tesla. And Norway will also pass 1000 Model 3s registered in December, even overtaking the ID3. Yes, no demand in Europe. Demand is collapsing, right Gordon? Going to be fun to hear how Gordon will explain these records and growing sales. The exact opposite of Gordon's predictions. But he will figure it out. We continue to see more and more battery and solar systems pop up all over the world. And this one is an 100% sun powered building. Tesla batteries provide 100% autonomous power from sunlight to building in Fukushima. Kuyova Exio has installed a complete self-contained solar and battery system at the growth house. The product should be the first fully autonomous system in Japan. A 40 kilowatt solar panel system and batteries with a total capacity of 684 kilowatt hour were installed to create a completely self-sustained system that does not receive any power from the grid. The battery used was, of course, the Tesla power pack. And Mercedes announced their next generation eSprinter electric van. Back in 2018, Mercedes-Benz unveiled its electric eSprinter van that hit Europe market last year. The eSprinter is equipped with a battery capacity of 55 kilowatt hours for an estimated range of 150 kilometers with a maximum payload of 900 kilos. These configurations are useful for some CD use cases, but not the best performance there for the eSprinter. But now Mercedes announced that the next generation of the electric van will allow for more options and will come to the US and Canada as well. But they did not say when it will come out. They did not give any details on specs and performance. So they only said they are spending 350 million euros to bring this new version of the electric van to market. So yet another big automaker talking about all the money they are spending on making EVs and still not bringing much to real life. But I still think it's a very good idea with the eSprinter and I do hope they will come with a very nice van with good specs and very soon. Because Tesla is coming out with a Cybertruck next year and that truck is both cheaper than the ED Sprinter and can carry many more kilos. But does of course not have the same kind of room as the eSprinter does. But we all know that Tesla could come out with a Cyber van in maybe a couple of years. So if the eSprinter is not coming out soon, I think they will be destroyed by 
by a cybervan because we know what kind of specs Tesla is able to make a truck with. And this is going to make the e-sprinter look like a joke and be cheaper. So when Tesla comes out with that, who would buy the e-sprinter? But we do not know when the e-sprinter will come out or when or if Tesla will come out with a cybervan. But a cybervan would just make so much sense. It's hard to imagine Tesla won't make this at some point. But good luck Mercedes with your e-sprinter. Hope to see it soon. And Audi is getting ready for their next electric car. Audi announced that it is starting production of its e-tron GT, its new luxury and performance sedan. The vehicle is an exciting entry into the EV space and collaboration with Porsche, leveraging their expertise with the Taycan. So it should be a very good performer since it will share the powertrain with the Porsche Taycan that we all know is a very good performing EV. We did just see some new drag races between the two giants, the Porsche Taycan and the Tesla. Model S. They are pretty much equally fast off the line, but the Taycan just takes the Tesla at the end as we have seen before, thanks to its two-speed transmission. And it is just 0.2 seconds faster on a quarter mile. So the Porsche is still the king of the quarter mile until we get the new Tesla Model S Plaid version. That will just be a whole new kind of beast. And Porsche Taycan has also become Porsche's best-selling car. It is like I have said many times before, make a good EV and people will buy it. Also because an EV is just superior to an ICE car. And Porsche has shown just that. So I do really hope they are not losing too much money on their Taycan, because all the numbers shows that the electric Porsche is the one people want. It is their best-selling car. So Porsche has to make some more EVs. Hope everyone is waking up and seeing what is happening in the auto industry. Or maybe that is why so many are just making decent electric cars and not great EVs. Because if they do, like Porsche did, they better be ready to suffer the consequences. <laughs> People suddenly want your electric car and don't want your noisy, smelling, polluting, low-performing ICE car. They want the new and superior EVs. But let's get back to the Audi e-tron GT, because hopefully we could see some very good acceleration and fast charging. It will probably not be a cheap car, but it's, it's an Audi, they don't have to, but could be something really good. And definitely looking forward to seeing this thing in real life, but we still have to wait a while. Even though the production is already starting, Audi says that it won't start taking orders for the GT until spring 2021. But definitely a car to keep an eye on next year. Could be something really good. And let's squeeze the last short topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. It is not just Tesla that is building in Texas. Steel Dynamic Incorporation is also building a very big factory in Texas that supposedly is going to provide the stainless steel for Tesla's Cybertruck. And Steel Dynamics expects to have the factory up and running by the fall of 2021. So that should fit right in with Tesla's plan for when they expect to start production of the Cybertruck. And in Sweden, plug-in captured a record of 37% of the market in November 2020. Nice. And Tesla's electronic component supplier, Picatron, has seen increase in orders for the central control system for the Model 3 in Q4, according to sources from the upstream supplier chain. Yet another hint for a strong demand for Q4. And Elon Musk confirms that he's actually moving to Texas, where the new Giga factory will be, and SpaceX also have one of their launch sites. And Toyota announced this week that it will develop a flexible, scalable chassis for, yes, hold on, an electric vehicle. Yes, hold on, for electric vehicles called ETNGA. Great name. And will take the wrap off an all new electric SUV destined for the European market customers in a few months. So Toyota is slowly dipping their toes into the EV waters. Wow. And Tesla shows just how fast they can make supercharging stations. Tesla China brings 27 mostly V3 supercharging stations, 219 stalls online in the last 24 hours as demand soars. 
impressive. And Rivian is also making charging network with focus on adventurous destinations. So they will get charges up in remote areas so you can go have fun in your EV pickup truck in destination that usually is not good for an EV because of charging infrastructure. Very good idea Rivian. Hope you will make some zero emission charging station with solar and battery storage. That would be awesome. Tesla's navigation waypoints are just around the corner. The not so undercover Tesla hacker, Green, the only recently discovered evidence hinting that waypoints are coming to Tesla's navigation system, or at least Tesla is actively preparing to introduce the highly requested feature soon. SpaceX got 885 million dollars from FCC auction earmarked for SpaceX Starlink internet service to provide internet to places around the world that otherwise would have no chance of getting internet. Yes, Starlink will be a game changer for so many people around the world. And guess what is the worst company of the year? I will give you a little hint. This is their factory being constructed. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Nikola got the price of the worst company of the year, according to Yahoo Finance audience. Congratulations, Nikola. And even before we end off with a bit of fun, we have already got the joke of the year. JP Morgan raised their price target on Tesla from $80 to $90. <laughs> The stock has raised over $200 in less than a month. How can they be serious about this? It's just a joke. And before we end up with a bit of fun, I just want to give a quick shout out to my newest patrons and members of this channel. Dominic S. Andy House. Carl Sloman. Guy Wood. Jerome Ferreira. And my thank you for watching members. William F. Peewee. Edward Davis. Daniel G. Thank you all so much for your support, it means the world to me. But let's end off with a lot of fun and let's start with my little Christmas calendar competition where you have a chance to win a Best in Tesla t-shirt of your choice if I pick your comment on one of these videos as the funniest of the week. And thanks for all the great comment, it is just so nice to hear all the laughter and joy this little Christmas calendar brings to so many people. Much appreciated guys. And of course also thanks for all the funny comments like last spreading Christmas cheers and SpaceX spreading rocket parts. <laughs> Beautiful combination. Very funny but the one that made me laugh the hardest was a short and simple joke from Mario. I have a joke. The competition is coming. <laughs> Very good. Simple but really funny. Make me laugh. Thank you so much, Mario. I will contact you on YouTube for more details. And Mario, you should go in and check my merchandise store and check out which t-shirt you would like. And all of you can, of course, support this show by buying some merchandise on the merch store. And for all of you that have already done, thank you so much for your support. And let's end off with a bit of fun. And to stay in the Christmas spirit, today's little video is one posted on Twitter by Connecting the Dots. Because he posted a nice video showcasing how the Tesla stock is moving. Yeah, you don't want to get in front of that train. And that is all we have time for in this news episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps out this video a lot. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. If you are already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. If you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of the show and get your shout out here on this channel. You can also become a member of Best in Tesla YouTube channel and get shout outs and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. But going forward, I will make more videos available for patrons and members only, so don't miss out. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news and more in there as it comes out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>